use very sharp edges and lines to sort of captivate um, these different places that I visited um, pretty much around Colorado and sort of the Southwest. And I'm pulling in a lot of um, these energies and these feelings that I'm, when I go to these places and these colors um, are sort of magnifying that, those feelings that I have when I'm in that place. Like for instance, this is um, Lake Haya, not Lake Haya, it's a hanging lake. And this is probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to <laughs> so far in Colorado. It's quite the hike, but getting there, with, you, you see this incredible blue green lake with these waterfalls pulling down and all these rhythms and these energies and these colors are just speaking to me. And so when I, I take that all in and I, don't, I take a couple pictures, but I try not to use those pictures when I'm painting because I don't want to like emulate it too much. I want, to, I want the feeling to come out when I'm painting. And so by doing that, I, I just compose it as I go along with, with tape and create these lines and these divides and bring it in like a kaleidoscope or a stained glass window. And so that's why you're seeing all these kind of different, different lines that indicate, you know, sort of a divide between maybe the water and the waterfalls and the rocks. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I use is, um, you know, I use, I use tape and I use, um, some photographs, but I'm really pulling in from my memory. And um, so if you look over here, this looks just, you know, for some people, it's, it's like just a bunch of lines and faces, but I'm really trying to evoke the rhythms in a canyon. Um, if, if you're kind of driving along and you see the rocks and the canyons, they come in different lines and different shapes, and I'm trying to pull that all in together. Um, I mostly work in acrylic, although I've used oil before, and I love the sort of milky and the buttery consistency of oil. I found that acrylic gives me a chance to really let something dry quickly, then paint over it, and then work in layers. And so um, sometimes these paintings have more than one layer of them because I want to I want to add to them or I want to glaze over them a little bit. Um, and that's sort of kind of my process. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of these paint the paintings that are smaller are sort of like little snapshots of like different you know floral areas or rocks or sort of little aspects of nature and um, this one over here is um, sort of like when you're looking through the light through the trees and you see it kind of a prismic colors coming through um, that's kind of where that was inspired by and then a couple of other places are waterfalls. And if you notice on these two, you'll see these sort of long, sort of streaming lines. Um, those are to evoke water and the rhythm of waters. Um, that's why it's titled uh, Pathways, Energies, and Rhythms, is that I'm connecting all this stuff with nature and putting it into an abstract form um, and trying to use color, lines, and shape to evoke that. I have worked on canvas, and I, I love canvas, but um, when I started picking up wooden panels, I just wanted to try it out, because it, you know, it has a very, it's a very natural material, and I like the way that it just, I don't, ha it, canvas kind of gives a little bit, and I can just sort of get these sharp lines when I'm working on the wooden panel. Um, gouache is like a type, it's a thicker watercolor, acrylic watercolor. And what I like about it is that some of them just have extremely bright colors that I like to use, so, um, it gives me a chance to kind of create these little bright, Can you point out what, what, this bright color right in here. Uh, it's like an acrylic, it's like an acrylic watercolor. Yeah. It's just thicker and it's a little bit more opaque and you can get the, you can make it a little bit more clear by adding water, but I like to use it, um, only if I'm layering over like this orange in here has a little bit of a wash over another darker orange, and it creates a sort of color. You see the darker coming out from underneath it a little bit. It kind of creates a different kind of interesting texture. Um, I also like it because um, it gives me, because it has some of the brightest colors, like they'll have some really heightened fluorescent colors, and I like to um, 
juxtapose that against something that's a little bit more muted, like a like a bronzy color or maybe a little bit more of a muted sort of pink, darker pink. Um, just kind of, I like that contrast that it gives me because for me, um, painting is magic and being able to use acrylics and build these layers and use like a gouache watercolor creates that magical moment for me, especially when I get something like this, this sort of darker, this brighter color of a darker color. Um, it, I don't know, it's, it's really playful for me. And that's, and it's really, it brings a lot of joy to me when I do it. Um, no, it can, it does bleed off. And especially when I pull the, the, the tape, I often have to go by and back and kind of rework those lines a little bit. Um, but it's, it doesn't do it quite as much as, you know, like using just a plain watercolor. Like it depends. Sometimes I like to work on a flat surface and I like to just kind of lay everything down and kind of work around it like on a table and just keep, and then I'll, then I'll add, I'll put it up on an easel and we work it some more and then lay it down. And so I'm kind of constantly moving it back and forth. Then I'll put it aside if I feel like I've reached a, a moment where I'm like, okay, I think I've done all I can do here. And then maybe a week later, I'm like, okay, now I see something. I want to go back and I want to rework this a little bit. So sometimes they can't, they, they arrive very quickly and sometimes it takes me a while to kind of get something out of it. Like this one probably took me several months to kind of pull uh, the light out of this one. I started this, this painting right here, um, right after I had eye surgery, <laughs> or kind of in the middle of that. And it was very dark and because I had the lights really low because I had to keep my light low. And so this one was a challenge because this was also, taken at Zapata Falls, which is kind of in this little cavern, a little canyon, which very light comes in, but you get a little bit. And so I was trying to evoke what those little feelings and that light that was coming through. So I had to kind of almost carve it out of it, like it was a canyon, so. I'm just curious, like on one of these, you know, what, what was mm -hmm. the first piece, you talk about layering, mm -hmm. and do the bigger pieces, are they first and then the finer lines? Yeah, later, some, of the, some of the bigger pieces come first. I mean, naturally, um, that guides me more. And then I can kind of work in and kind of bring some of those smaller lines in and refine it a little bit and bring, maybe I change a shape or I bring rework it a little bit as I go along. But I definitely start, um, no, I don't draw it out. I just start putting the tape down. I already kind of have a vision of where I want to go, but I, I kind of let my intuition guide me. Yeah. It's, it's a very intuitive process for me. I, I don't really want to have it all kind of laid out because then if I do that, I get very stuck in the moment and I won't, I won't keep going. I'll just stop and I'll get frustrated. So I, if I just kind of let it flow um, and compose as I go along, then I feel like it's, it, I keep it loose and I think I arrive at what um, I'm really proud of at the end. Sometimes I decide the title after. Actually, most and more than not, I decide the title after. I know what it's about. I know the place. I know the feeling I want, but I haven't achieved what I what it feels like in words. And then I'm like, okay, that's the space. Or maybe I read something, or I heard a song, or you know, sometimes it's a memory of someone that was with me, or sometimes it's just um, just living in that moment, and then the words will come to me. Mm -hmm. Like um, for this one right here, this one, um, the clouds look like mountains. This was a memory I was having of my of my grandmother who passed away over a year ago, and um, it was really sweet because I was driving along and I was looking over the side and um, looking at the clouds, and I remember my grandmother saying, "Because we lived in Oklahoma and it's so flat here, there's mountains everywhere." And she said to me one time, we were in the car, she says, sometimes I like to pretend, you know, when we're out in the country and there's nothing along, but the clouds look like mountains. And I just thought that was such a sweet little thing to keep yourself entertained while you're driving along in something boring. And I just had that moment with her um, when I was driving and I looked over and I thought the clouds do kind of look like a little bit more elevated the mountains. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to paint that. 
going to paint what I saw and what I felt in that memory. So, and some of the areas are kind of up in Northwest um, Colorado, up in near um, the Rocky Mountain National Forest, up in Boulder. Some of them are here, <laughs> and some of them have just been places that I've driven by and just thought, wow, that's amazing. And so, how do I choose my colors? Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it, it really is about based on how I'm feeling, like especially about that place. Um, you know, when I was up in, I, cho I chose a lot of greens in this area because this is probably up in the northwest. They are of the northwest. Um, Colorado, up in the Rocky Mountains, and there's a lot of greenery up there, and a lot of browns, and a lot of bronzes, and I was pulling all of that in. Um, so I, I don't know, they just, they just kind of speak to me, and I kind of look at my, my palette and the paints that I have. Sometimes it's just going to the paint store and going, oh my gosh, this color is amazing, <laughs> and I'm going to use it. I don't know what it's for, but I have this hot pink, and I'm going to use it for something, and I just kind of let it kind of flow. Um, and sometimes if it's just a, a very heightened memory, like this one was um, last summer, and it's pulling in a lot of those oranges and oranges and um, browns and all those things that you think about in the summertime. This one actually was thinking about the aspens in the fall, which are not, you know, you don't think of them as hot pink, but you're pulling in all these like fractions of colors and. And so it kind of had a fall, but also kind of a summery feel. So it was kind of almost felt like it was like a late summer kind of feeling. This one right here, um, this this large one, letting the light in. And um, that for me, I try not to like go by the natural colors that are around me. I'm trying to bring in some of those colors that might evoke a feeling that I'm having at that moment. Um, so something that I was feeling, you know, that, you know, when, you, when you're seeing something so amazing as, you know, these beautiful golden aspens up, north, up in the northwest in the fall, they're just, it's, it's so beautiful. It's like seeing a bouquet of flowers, you know, you're just like, it lifts you up. So those colors bring in a lot of the feelings that I'm feeling lifted up at that time. Yes. Yeah. Feel a little bit of that too. And then these four pieces over here um, are pieces that are just kind of like these little snapshots and, of thoughts that I've had while driving, just these little, these little viewpoints of when you're driving along, especially in the mountains, and you've got all these switchbacks, and you're seeing a sunset kind of pull in, and you've got all these amazing colors, and they're just shouting at you, and you're just like, you're having this very uplifting moment. So a lot of, as you can tell, I'm very inspired by nature, very rare. Does it have anything to do with like living in the city or anything like that? So um, although I'm very using very probably very contemporary colors, I want to kind of pull that in and hope that when somebody's looking at that, they're having that moment, that feeling that they have when they're out in nature and hope it gives you a chance to kind of look at something a little bit differently, I'm taking the extraordinary out of the ordinary. Because a lot of this is coming from my mind and coming from bringing that, extracting it and pulling it in and um, trying to reinterpret that onto um, on another surface and, and, how, and trying to bring in what I felt about that place. And um, so, it, you know, I'm glad that somebody can get a chance to really um, kind of get a chance to see something that I might be seeing. Or if they see something else, that's fine too. When I worked in a museum, I was like, fine, you see something else and what I see, that's okay. I mean, you're gonna see something in an abstract painting versus what somebody else will see and that's, you're valid and that's fine. So that's what I love about abstraction. It's, it's really, um, it's work, but it's play and it's um, being able to um, compose and do something completely different. I jumped in it when I was very young, um, and I, very, I was very um, inspired by a lot of the abstract 
artists at the time, contemporary mid-century artists. And um, the Impressionists were my first, they were my gateway drug into art. So <laughs> that was it. Monet did it for me. And so from then on, I just kind of really gravitated towards those artists who were really thinking outside the box and using heightened colors. And the colorists at the time were really, um, you know, Rothko and Frank Azaler were some of my top inspirations. So, yeah.